Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome to you to my series Iconology and Temple Architecture Perspectives. Today we are going to visit Goa and Goa for the purpose of Mahadev Temple. Goa is a beautifully natured place and Tamadai Sula is another beautiful place because it is surrounded by forest and there is a beautiful architectural temple that is devoted for Lord God Mahadeva and we are going to visit it today. Now it is extensive topic therefore for description purpose we have divided into external and internal. There is another video which deals with external appearances, external beauties, external types, architectural varieties. That is a different video and I have given link at the end of this. Now this lecture we are going to deal with the internal aspect but not before I acknowledge with thanks many people who has helped me. They are my technicians, they are my workers, they are my friends, they are from YouTube channel which I had taken certain ideas. So also there are many reference articles which I referred before writing this as far as temple architecture is concerned. I acknowledge with thanks all of them. But most of the photographic material is my own. Illustration, certain part I have borrowed from the net but I confirm it is royalty free. So let's go going to the internal aspect that is interior beauties of this uh, Mahadeva temple situated at Tamras, Tamri Surla, Goa. Now it is situated in a Mahavir wildlife sanctuary. First Goa is beautiful, it is full of forest and in that this particular location is once you come down of the guard stations near Ponda it is and it's absolutely beautiful. Now Tamri Surla is a protected site it is protected monuments of national importance situated in Goa, I told you, near Ponda. Then the Tamri Surla is a 12th century Shiva temple. That is, it is constructed in 12th century. It belongs to Kadamba dynasty and the design of it, once we are going into detail, you will find out that there are a lot of contributors for that and lot of different varieties in that. It is the actively worshipped Hindu temple. Most of the ASI side, if you see the temples, there is no deity worshipped. But here, not only deity is worshipped, but also there is a regular yatra, what we call that once in a year, Mahashivaratri people gathers here. Now, it is a important thing that this was on a trade track between Karnataka and Goa. So that's why it has got importance right from the earlier stage. So also it has got lot of influence of the Karnataka temple architecture, particularly Aihoi. Now once we are seeing this temple, you will remember some of the temples in Aihoi and that is also covered in our some topics that is on different video. Now there is a lingbo, uh, lingam that is a symbol of Shiva mounted on a pedestal inside the sanctum. So it is actively worshipped Shiva lingam. People believe that a huge cobra is permanently recent in this premises. Why? The premises is protected for so long time, number one. And number two, it is densely, the, uh, densely uh, forest in which you can see a lot of wild animals also and snakes also. So people believe that this temple is there, it is protected by a large king cobra, but that is a earlier days myth. But even on today, uh, the restriction is entry for the night. You cannot go there in the night. The temple consists of Garbhagraha, that is Antra and a pillar Nandi Mandapa built of uh, basalt, that is the ample rock available here because of the Shantayadri mountain. We are going to see it in the pictures. The four pillar embellished with uh, intricate carvings of the elephants and chains supported by stone ceiling decorated with finely carved lotus flowers. Now it has got eight pillars and we are going to see it in detail. I'll show you a good photograph of the ceiling with a lotus. So carving here is beautiful. You have to imagine the equipment they had, the instrument they had and how they have carved it with that in the 12th century. So you can definitely admire the craftsman who has done it. You will definitely admire the skill of and symmetry and designing of the temple once you see it. Now, 
the inside the, the temple you can find Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma with their respective consorts that is Shiva is with Nandi, the Vishnu is with Garuda and also Brahma you will see here inside the temple. The mandap that is pillar hall is covered with a roof of plain grey slope slabs. Uh, you can find it from outside that they are better appreciated. The temple faces east. What is the advantage of east? When sun rises, the sun rays come directly over the deity and it's beautiful to watch. There is a small mandapam and in the sanctum and is surrounded by three tiered tower. Those top is uh, incomplete or maybe uh, ruined because of the time or it might have been dismantled in the past. Now there is a broken Nandi that is a bull that is Shiva's vehicle uh, in the center of the mandap surrounded by the decorated columns. Now symbol of Kadamba kingdom you can find it over here that is an elephant tramping a horse is carved on the base of one of the pillars so that symbol was taken by Kadamba dynasty and they also have it the river Ragada that is the uh, river next to this temple and there is a steps going for it but nowadays they have closed the door since the place was possibly misused or there might have been some accidents because of the people going into the river water but those who want to take a spiritual bath they can always do it that is available here so that was the earlier days the rituals that they take the bath there itself and take the darshana of shiva now the there is a big festival at mahashivratri time it is celebrated and lot of people in the surrounding villages come and visit this temple now why this uh, temple has survived one of the reason is because it is built in a place which is inaccessible now imagine the roads are not there you have to come in the forest so really risky and that's why possibly the temple is still remaining in spite of eight years 800 years i have passed but still everything is very nicely preserved the temple is small is small in size as compared to the average govan temples govan temples are large now let's have first look at the external, externally how it looks. I told you it's a Kedamba style but it is influenced by Visera that is the Chalukyan style. You can see the pillars, you can see the black stone used that is black basalt. The temple faces east side so that the sun when rises the rays will come directly on the deity that is Shiva Lingam. See the beautifully carved, you can see the flower designs and don't forget they are 800 years old. Now there is some repair work done but essentially these temples are built without any cement or any adhesive material. I am sure you will appreciate these carvings. Now this is more extensively covered in the lecture based on the external appearance of this temple. Here we are just going to take a review of it with quickly going into the inside details of the temple. But this is just to recollect that what is it from outside. So what I told you, features of Kadamba, there are very few temples which are belonging to the, this type of architecture. That's why this uh, temple has got importance. Then uh, Hoysara is actually a mixture of uh, north and south and that was adapted by Yadavas also and also Chalukyas. So Aihori which is taken as a laboratory of the temples you will find all of these things. Now this is the inside view of the temple. See always it is better to discuss with people the ideas or the designings of the temple. They give you a good idea so it is nice to discuss with them all of these. They, there is good exchange of ideas going on. You have got certain things about that. You want to get your doubts clarified. And that is what I had done at the beginning of my lecture. I thanked all of them who has helped me or with whom I had discussed, with whom I have got my ideas cleared. And they have helped me to make this uh, understanding of these uh, temples in a better ways. Now, after going quickly from the outside,
Now it is one of a essential thing. What it is? It carries the holy water. That is water used for abhishekas. Then for washing deity, it comes out of it. Now in a way, it comes out. Whether it comes out by crocodile that belongs to either Chalukyas or the Dravidian style, or it could be a Gomukha. But that came. That is the cow's face. But that came after 14th century. So this is important from a point of view of classifying this the temple. But here, what you can see, it is uh, possibly broken, and they have rebuilt it. That's a good thing. Archaeology department is doing. Now here, you can sit for a while in the temple, and you can observe the beauties. You can observe silence, and you can really enjoy the nature. If you see here, it's beautifully carved pillars. Now the pillar had got both types. That is, one is square also and round also, and make they make a symmetry in such a way that you can really need a, a very small caliber to make the differences. See how they are made. When there was no computers, where there were no scales, but still, in spite of that, they had done it. So you should admire the beauties of it, and you should think how they have done it. As I told you, there are a lot of uh, visitors. Who visit this temple and uh, they worship this. Now this is sanctum. This is as basically a Shiva's temple. In spite of that, you will see the deities like uh, Ganesha and what we are going to see this Devastakas very shortly. Snakes is one of a very popular type of design in these temples, either a single or multiple. Beautifully carved pillars. There are minor cracks, but now it is our duty to protect them so that the next generation can see it. Wherever there is Shiva's temple, you will have to find a Nandi. Nandi can either be in the same temple or it can be outside the temple. That is called as Nandi Mandapam. So Nandi Mandapam is usually a South Indian style in Dravidian temples. However, lot of places you will find mixtures of it. Now you have to observe the beauties of ceiling. I told you the beautiful ceilings are carved. Now here we come to a ceiling as well as a grill. The grill is carved in a stone, and one of the speciality of Chalukyans is what they have done this. Now if you see the ceiling, it will show you beautiful flowers, beautifully decorated, and these are ceilings. And vertical is a pillar. Now this. Beautiful carved lotus, you can see. Then grill made up of stones, and that is the signature of uh, Badami Chalukyas. As you know, there are three types of Chalukyas, and this belongs to the Badami type of Chalukyas. Again, there is a beautiful ceiling. Now this is a. Eight leaf lotus that is called as Padma Pushpa. It's a auspicious, and it is of course it has to be in a temple. But they are important because the lotus is having eight leaves, and that's why it is called Padma Pushpa. Now here you are seeing elephant, and he is killing horse. And elephant killing tiger. Again, there are inside beauties. Nandi is worshipped along with Mahadeva. Now you are seeing here two snakes. They are also worshipped. That's a wonderful thing. Not only the deities, but also the animals like snakes are also worshipped. Here you are seeing a Ganesha, Lord Ganesha, and a goddess also. Lord Ganesha and carvings of stones. Then the different angle to give you a three-dimensional idea about the temple. 
all the pillars we are shown here. Now some worship has been done to the goddesses. Now, see what is important is Mahavishnu. How you identify is uh, deity Vishnu? It is because of the Shankar Chakra Gada, and his vehicle is Garud. You can see, you can appreciate. At foot there is with Garud with small wings, and there are Devashtakas. Now Devashtakas is a place, a small place like uh, thing where the deities are kept or deities are there in these small devashtakas and this is a typical of uh, kadamba style they have made it and not very popular in other the styles but the kadamba they have done it and in their architecture they have retained it and as i told you there are very few temples today of this type of uh, architecture but this type of devashtakas you can see also in some other temples also like hidrapur mahadeva temple and there are many in south that will be dealt in a different topic of Devashtakas. Now here you are seeing from the... This is a path by way the early rays of uh, rising sun falls on the deity that is on Lingam. You have to worship Nandi before worshipping Lord Shiva. And this is the Sanctum in which the active pujas are going on as i told you and there is one speciality of shivalingam always there is water that is the water is dripping what is called abhishekas or there is a abhishek patra from which the water percolates over the shivalingam it is custom of many many places and many time you will see all these things so you have to worship once you go to the shiva's temple this is shivalingam We thanks archaeology department for keeping it so beautifully, maintaining a discipline and you have seen how beautifully they have made it, how beautiful is the garden. So for that we must thank archaeology department. With that we are coming to the end of this lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. I hope I have given you some information regarding the Kadamba style because the Kadamba styles are not many, there are very few. Though it is a small temple, it is beautifully carved, it is in beautiful nature and that is why you enjoy it. Thank you, goodbye, take care and subscribe us. There are a lot of such informative, informative lectures which are following.